When you're naturally curious, every day is school day, but I'll bet you didn't realize just how much there is to learn about the seemingly mundane items we see and use on the daily. From deceptive store displays to the secret messages hidden in fast food, let's take a look at yet another batch of amazing secrets hidden in everyday things. Off Target with almost 2,000 stories across the USA, it's likely that the average American either visits or sees a Target branch pretty much every day. You're likely to recognize the brand's iconic bright red bullseye logo. But have you ever been to a Target and noticed those big red spheres sitting right out front of the store? You might have assumed they're just decorations to add to the overall brand aesthetic. But those gigantic pimples actually serve a very important purpose. They're actually bollards and are there to act as a barrier between cars and the storefront, keeping customers safe in the event a vehicle loses control. While the bollards you're probably familiar with look more like this, Target took the opportunity to make theirs hit the mark when it came to brand recognition. Chick fil OK. While your parents might have told you that too much fast food isn't good for you, you can never fill up onto many fast food secrets. While the question of exactly which fast food chain serves the best chicken nuggets is a tough one, it's no secret that Chick fil A is up there. But the real secret lies now with Chick fil A's chicken nuggets, but the box they come in. In November 2018, one ahem ahem genius Twitter user seemingly solved a big Chick fil A mystery. According to them, the hole at the back of the humble nugget box exists so you can perch the top atop your drink and have a place to thread your straw through. Now, I'm always the first in line for a fast food hack, but this doesn't seem quite right. And that's because it isn't. The hole in this instance is actually a removable tab and its purpose is far more than a simple straw hole. There are, in fact, three tabs on the backs of the boxes Chick-fil-A used to serve their chicken pieces, but they're not there for straws. According to the company, the three punchable tabs are actually there to indicate what's in the box. Nuggets, strips or other. Either way, the straw trick is still pretty cool and it's safe to say the Chick-fil-A is really Chick-fil-A secrets. A cut above. Kitchen scissors are a deceptively handy tool. While most people just use them for chopping herbs or opening packets, they actually have quite a few lesser-known uses. You might have noticed that one of the more obvious differences between regular scissors and the kitchen variety is the serrated gap often found between the handles of kitchen scissors. But you may not have realized what the actual purpose of those metal teeth actually is. Tight jar lids and bottle tops can be a real menace, especially from my delicate palms, but those serrated edges can act as a grip for any stubborn lids. They can even pop off a bottle cap, though many scissors come with more effective dedicated tools for this purpose built in. But that's not all, the little serrated teeth can also serve as a cracker for nuts and shells, and in some scissor varieties as an herb stripper. They truly are a cut above the rest. Soul searching. While you may walk around wearing Vans sneakers for fashion, they gained popularity in the late 60s as practical, affordable shoes. As skateboarding gained popularity in the 70s Vans developed their signature design, and thanks to their grippy, durable, weighted soles, they proved ideal for skaters, given that grip tape was only just beginning to be used on boards. But there's pretty red trick you can perform with Vans, no skateboards required. Watch this. That's right. Just like a cat always lands on its feet, a pair of vans will almost always land on its soles. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but the thick sole's disproportionate weight will often orientate the shoe correctly as it hits the ground. Heck, I had a pair of vans that lasted me nearly a decade, so it looks like they might have nine lives too. Abandoned chip, crispy, crunchy and oh so addictive potato chips reign supreme in the salty snack world. But some chip consumers may have noticed that every now and again, while digging in their favorite bag, they'll pull out one of these. But what is exactly up with these green chips? Is it mold? And more importantly, are they safe to eat? When potato chips turn out green, it's because they were made from taters that have been exposed to too much light in storage and have become laced with a toxin called solanine. Solanine can cause some pretty nasty side effects when ingested in large amounts, including vomiting, headaches, diarrhea and even paralysis of the central nervous system. But before you swear off chips for life, it's worth nothing that you'd have to consume several pounds of solanine-laced chips to reach a dangerous level of toxicity. 
So, when you find a green potato chip somewhere in your bag it's okay, just know it probably spent a little too long in the sun. Shifty, shifty. In our modern world, there's no getting away from computers. It's not much of a secret that modern keyboards were based on typewriters, but some key changes have been made to keep up with the evolving ways we use computers. You might have wondered why countless keyboards have two sets of control, Alt and Shift keys. What's the point in having two sets of keys that do the exact same thing? The purpose of these duplicate keys is, quite simply, to help the typist access the same function with whichever hand is most convenient. However, some countries' keyboards have an alt gr button, short for alt graph, which allows the user to type foreign letters and characters, I tapping the keys the keyboard has been assigned for the purpose. Through, I'm still going to continue to believe that the alt gr key is just the alt key you press when you're angry. Get a grip. Spend more than a few minutes soaking in the bathtub or tearing it up in the swimming pool, and you'll notice that your fingers have undergone a pretty dramatic transformation. But what exactly is up with water-shriveled fingers? This question has plagued scientists for quite some time and even now, they can't be 100% sure, but there's one theory in particular that stands out. Some scientists have suggested that the wrinkles on our wet fingers and toes may act like rain treads on tires or the soles of shoes, which make it easier to grip objects with wet skin. The theory goes that our wrinkled digits and soles could have given our ancient ancestors key advantage when it came to gripping damp branches or exploring over well, slippery rocks. I guess the main benefit these days is being able to grip onto our precious phones on rainy days. Haha <laughs> evolution. King of broken hearts. Depending on what game you're playing, kings are usually amongst the most important playing cards. But if you look a little closer at the king of hearts, you might notice something that just might break your heart. Horrifyingly enough, the king of hearts is often depicted as sticking a sword into his own noggin. But why? While this is often attributed to a story about King Charles VII of France going mad and committing a similar deed, that rumor is a load of baloney. While the real Charles did become very ill and paranoid towards the end of his life, his ultimate end came when an abscess in his mouth caused so much swelling, was unable to swallow anything, leading him to starve to death in 1461. A pretty horrendous end indeed. But sorry, Charlie boy, this isn't about you. There's a lot of debate over the source of inspiration for the King of Hearts card, but one plausible story is more widely accepted than others. While the King of Hearts is most likely based on a French ruler, it's one that sat on the throne more than 600 years before Charles VII. Charlemagne was the ruler of Francia, part of which later became France, and he was later the first Holy Roman Emperor of Europe in the 9th century. The main theory goes that early King of Hearts playing cards depicted Charlemagne, the great conqueror, holding his weapon aloft, but this was set to change. The card ended up going through variations in its design, as artists copied one another imperfectly over time. Begging with a battle axe being held over the king's head, it's likely that those copying the pictures misinterpreted the weapon close behind the king's head as a sword that looks like it's embedded inside his head. To this day, misinformation spread around the internet about the card king's head have led to some pretty hilarious modern updates to the King of Hearts card. Sorry Iron Man are IP, oh crumbs. While popping a couple of slices in the toaster is a part of many people's daily routine, a surprising number fail to realize that their favorite kitchen appliance is hiding a secret in pain sight. At the base of some toasters, you'll find a hidden compartment that plays a very crucial role, and if you didn't know about this, you might be in for a bit of a messy shock. This is crumb tray, which conveniently catches any crumbly rubble as you insert and remove the bread from the toaster. You're actually supposed to empty the crumb tray after every two to three uses of your toaster, according to manufacturers, so expect a debris horror show if you're only opening yours for the first time. Oh, crumbs indeed. Saucy secrets. One of the best things about a trip to McDonald's is the sauce station. Despite the ample supply of sauce, sachet and pump activated alike, regular customers have no doubt come up against the question of where to put it. While squeezing it out onto a little cup is a good option, there's an even more convenient choice if you've got some fries. You can actually bend the back of your fry box to form a nice little platform for you ketchup. 
but before you go thinking that McDonald's did this on purpose, I'm afraid it's not that simple. In reality, the higher flap of the box is purpose-built to help Mickey D's crew members easily scoop fries into the package, using the flap as a funnel. Still, that doesn't mean the fry flap can't double as prime dipping real estate anyhow. While the old saying suggests the proof is in the pudding, this next saucy surprise proves that the real secrets are in the sauce packets themselves. Eagle-eyed convenient lovers have realized that there are some mysterious numbers marked on the single-serve ketchup packets available in some restaurants. Some condiment spiracists theorized that the numbers equate to each packet's level of sweetness, suggesting that the lower number indicates the packet has a sweeter taste, and the higher numbers signal a sourer taste, meaning you can secretly tailor your dipping experience. While this might sound like a mind-blowing fact, it's actually a squeezed-out serving of pure fiction. The real reason behind the elusive numbers has actually been confirmed by the number one condiment king, Heinz. The sauce-laden company have stated that the numbers refer to the different filling lines the sachets were filled at during the manufacturing process in factories. So, as fun as sweet and sour variations sound, it all comes down to the layout of a factory, which is, honestly, pretty dull. But I hate to be a bore, so here's an amazing video of a baby kangaroo to cleanse your palate. Ah, uh, much better. Enjoy watching. Since the advent of the internet, we have been told that we cannot believe everything that we read and see there. But it will surprise you how many facts on the internet that seem to be fiction and deceit. But they are true. And here are some of these incredible facts. Let's go! Goats have accents. Most of us have wondered what it would be like to communicate with animals. A DR Doolittle reality might still be a way off. But we're one step closer to understanding the humble goat thanks to a groundbreaking discovery. They have accents goat bleats. Yes, those adorable little bleats are actually spoken in distinctly different dialects. According to a team of researchers from London's Queen Mary University, it's not uncommon for humans to pick up new accents after changing social groups or moving away from home. So why shouldn't goats do the same? Wow! According to DR Elodie Briefer, that's exactly what happens. The team studied a group of pygmy goats in 2012 at one week old and five weeks old, and found that they adapted their ways of communicating as they grew older and moved in different groups, making them one of the only other mammals to do so. I guess this means those goats yelling like humans might actually be saying you don't sound like you're from around here, buddy. Armadillos always give birth to identical quadruple TS. As if suddenly rolling your body into a compact armored ball isn't enough. To make you memorable, nine banded armadillos have another weird party trick. Giving birth to identical quadruple TS. T would be a mean feat once in a lifetime, but female armadillos can expect nothing less. Every single time they fall pregnant. Dot dot and no wonder they need to escape reality every once in a while. A female produces a single egg, which once fertilized, splits into four genetically identical embryos that each share one placenta. Scientists aren't sure exactly why this happens, but it could be an evolutionary attempt to produce identical clones in the knowledge that one offspring might not always survive in an ever-changing environment. It rains diamonds on Jupiter and Saturn, Earth can experience some freak weather, but possible inhabitants of Jupiter and Saturn could be well-accustomed. To a meteorological event Kim Kardashian would dream of, diamond rain. Believe it or not, us scientists have determined that a phenomenon occurring on these planets is capable of producing a rock big enough for a hefty engagement ring out of thin air. It all starts in the upper atmosphere. Where lightning created during intense thunderstorms turns methane into carbon or soot which then plummets down toward the planet's core. As the soot falls about 6,000 kilometers, immense atmospheric pressure is enough to turn it into graphite and eventually compressed diamonds, like popcorn but in reverse. Unfortunately for anyone expecting Elon Musk to create an intergalactic diamond shuttle anytime soon, it turns out these one centimeter diamonds don't last long. The stones fall for approximately two and a half Earth spans, 
by which point they likely melt into a sea of carbon which is far less appealing. You're taller in the morning, ever been rejected because she only dates guys who are six foot and over. Try suggesting breakfast for your next date and you might just get the boost you need. Believe it or not, you wake up taller each morning than you were when you went to bed the night before and it's all down to our good friend gravity. When you sleep, your spine is able to gain some much-needed respite. From the pressure of gravity and your body replenishes lost fluids between intervertebral discs, which stretch and relax. When you first awake, this excess fluid is enough to provide up to half an inch more height. So don't feel bad about rounding up on your Tinder profile, that also means we're basically being gradually compressed throughout our day, which is a pleasant thought. For the same reason, astronauts can experience an instant 2-inch growth spurt another reason to put space travel on your bucket list. Strawberries aren't berries, but bananas are. Let's imagine you've been kidnapped, and the kidnapper places a fruit bowl in front of you. He asks you to pick out all the berries for your freedom, so naturally you reach for the strawberries and raspberries. Guess what? You've just sealed your fate, bucko. That's right. Pretty much every fruit us humans added the berry suffix to isn't actually a berry. Because the English language is a Da Vinci code of utter nonsense, according to bona fide botanists, a berry is defined as a fleshy fruit with interior seeds which stems from one flower with one ovary. Strawberries and raspberries don't grow this way and have seeds on the outside, making them aggregate fruits instead. Meanwhile, bananas, whose seeds are so small they're easy to forget, are born of a single ovaried flower, making them a berry. If that wasn't wild enough, consider this, the humble avocado turned millennial cult symbol. Also, a berry. You can make diamonds from peanut butter, forget forking out big time at the jewelers or mining deep into the earth for a heist-worthy diamond. Just reach for the gif instead if you're a scientist, that is, Dan Frost from the Bayerisches Geoinstit in Germany discovered the snack's bizarre diamond-producing qualities in 2013 while trying to replicate the crystalline structures, believed to exist in the Earth's lower mantle. Thousands of kilometers below the Earth's surface, there's a geological process which extracts oxygen from CO2, leaving behind carbon that can then be crystallized into diamonds under immense pressure. Frost needed to use a carbon-rich material to try and replicate this process. And that's where good, old peanut butter comes in. Using a powerful piston under special lab conditions, Frost subjected the PB to pressures equal to 1.3 million times that of atmospheric pressure. Eventually, this was enough to produce a tiny diamond about 3 millimeters in diameter, which is smaller than a round-cut quarter carat stone. Size isn't the only drawback, because the agonizing process can take weeks at a time. Oh, and it also releases hydrogen, which causes small diamond-destroying explosions. I'd hold on to the engagement ring piggy bank for now. Are you clued up enough to know of any more facts that sound fake but are actually true? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe.